So you need to make some changes. You need to make them soon. I came to Eastern because of refuge, uh, because I knew that it was one of the only Christian colleges that had a, any kind of gay-straight alliance. Um, and I joined the club as a junior when I transferred in, and uh, uh, this is my first year leading refuge, and I'll be graduating in May. My name is Tommy Nielsen. I'm a senior here at Eastern. I am, I am gay, and I am a Christian. And, um, I, am a, I am a youth ministry major here. Um, and I'm currently in the process of, of trying to figure out what that means for my life uh, as, as the future kind of rolls in. And as a, as a person who has um, relatively recently come out of the closet publicly and who has been told um, in no uncertain terms from many different mouthpieces that uh, ministry is not the place for me, um, I really like to talk to you guys about ministry. Um, ministry for me has been an opportunity to do what I feel God has created me to do. Ministry is an opportunity to love people who have never been loved before. The fact that there are barriers that we have put up between ourselves and that ministry is a travesty onto our Lord. The fact that when a young person is in youth group and they are dealing with issues of sexuality and they're also dealing with issues of mental illness and suicidal ideation, the first thing that their youth leaders are more concerned about is their sexuality. And as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter what might be wrong with you as long as you know who your Savior is and how to give that to somebody else. For so long I thought that that was an impossibility for me because I've been told that. Stop listening to that. Um, so growing up in a Christian house in a very conservative uh, environment, I didn't really know what I thought about the Bible and sexuality and it took me coming to Eastern University meeting this wonderful group of people that are here in the community and talking to uh, mostly just people who have been in my shoes and understanding that I can be a Christian and I can be gay and those are not mutually exclusive. Life is short though I keep this from my children. Life is short and I've shortened mine in a thousand delicious ill-advised ways. The world is at least 50% terrible, and that's a conservative estimate, though I keep this from my children. For every bird, there is a stone thrown at a bird. For every loved child, a child broken, bagged, sunk in a lake. Life is short, and the world is at least half terrible. This place could be beautiful, right? You could make this place beautiful. Yes, but the cloudy crowds of the city, I hope that you can hear it. I hope that our breaths can fill and empty each other at the perfect moment in time. For I have traveled long and far in, in the darkness in order to see the sunrise. And wow, are you beautiful. I am 22 years old and I'm here to tell you that your words have consequences. I am 22 years old and I will never stop sharing my story. I am 22 years old and I will not shut up until every 14 year old child knows their worth does not hinge on the bones of those they love. I am 22 years old and all I'm asking is to be heard. Eastern would be uh, one of the first, I think either number two or three uh, university in the country to hire openly gay faculty members if they choose to make that decision and that's what we're encouraging them to do uh, just to take more of a neutral stance allow people to teach here no matter who they love and that's something that we're really hoping that we're able to push forward i am gay i'm a pastor and the sun is still shining <laughs> thanks be to god because i was told that i couldn't be a pastor I was actually told, we'll change denominations. There's another denomination that will accept you. And I said, no, that's not what I'm called to be. And it took me a long time to come to that. I'm old enough to be your parents. 
but I've also found too, I was also told I could not do youth ministry because I might turn some kids gay. I don't want you with my little kids because you're gonna attack them, you're gonna abuse them. The sad part of it is, it's still happening today, even in the church that I serve. We believe that the way we treat one another is the fullest expression of how we live out our faith. And we do our hardest to do that. How we live out our faith, how we treat one another, and we want to treat everyone with love, as do you. I hope that they take out that they're not alone. We had a group of 60 people-ish there today, and everyone was affirming and was really felt that you can be who you are, and you're still loved by people, you're still loved by God, and you're not alone. And I think that that's the most important message that any LGBT person can ever hear, but to hear it coming from uh, the mouths of strong Christian leaders, like those that we had speaking today, it was just really amazing, and I think that that's one of the most important things you can hear, that God loves you the way you are, and you're not alone. Last year, I came out in January, and... <laughs> eight people asked to meet with me that week because I simply had questions about how does this work? that I'm gay and I still want to be with God and I can still have a relationship with God. They came to me because there is no one on this campus who is LGBT staff, who is allowed to go sit with them and have that conversation with them. I work at a Christian camp and they love me and they know I am gay and they support me. I'm going to tell you a quick story about a camper I had. She was the perfect camper. She came to me one night after bawling her eyes out and said, I think I'm gay. And I feel like I have no one to help me. I wasn't able to share with her that I was gay because we were afraid of what her parents might do because her father had sexually abused her in the beginning of her younger age as she was still living with him and I had to meet that man when she had to go home at the end of the week. But through being able to sit down and talk with her and tell her the words I knew she needed to hear from someone who has been there and has known what it's like to feel alone, she's probably coming back this summer and I'm gonna be there to welcome her back because she said that for the first time in her life she felt the presence of God and she felt like she had a safe place for the first time in her life. And she found that at a Christian camp. So you tell me what's wrong with being gay and being Christian, because that girl just found a home in that. Woo!